Get ready for yoga. Find yourself present on your mat and feel that safe space. And allow yourself to close the eyes, drop the chin, and let the breath come in. During this time that your eyes are closed, find that space inside yourself. Find that connection for your yoga practice today. Let that breath flow in and out. Watch it go in. Loading fully up with a full breath and then allow that, allow that breath to release out. As you go through that cycle, you feel the body rise up as the inhale happens. And you feel the body allowing to sink into the sits bones and grounding in that exhale. That pattern of inhale and exhale, energizing the body on the inhales, makes your yoga a little more full. Blink the eyes open and inhale everybody together right now. Bring those arms up with that inhale, a little pressure on the top, exhale out, let that air release all the way to the floor. We're going to do one more of those and add on this time. Capture the breath, keep the mouth closed, and exhale out. Engaging that ujjayi breath. We're in again. Inhale up. Hold a little on the top. Add a little pressure. And release. Maintaining that flow. Close your eyes. Feel that full load, that hang time on the top of that breath. And exhale out. On the bottom, hold for a second. Allow a peaceful base. Inhale back up. Full ujjayi breath. You've got that claws on the top. Exhale out. And you're feeling that neck release along with that airflow. The inhale comes up. Loading. The gaze goes upwards. Energy. Match the hands. Exhale. Release. Feel the arms rotating downward. And find that nice, safe base. Last one, we're going to inhale up. Exhale, bring those hands all the way down, plant in front of you, and find your place on your mat, squaring off the knees and the hands, and let the back rise up, four, cat, tucking in the F, and release down into that sway back, lower position for cow, getting a full spinal warm up. You're up again with the inhale. I like to inhale on that and pull out of the arm socket. Tuck those abs. Exhale, releasing, coming down. You might even drop in for a little flavor of uja, or, um, chaturanga. Inhale, back up. And release out. And drop in. Keep those elbows in safely for that chaturanga lowering. A few more of these, taking that inhale. Each breath gives you a time for motion. Exhale, release the back curves. You lower down. If you're advanced, you're going to go much more aggressive on that. So here comes an advanced session. Regular, you just stay with that hold. Release into cow and sway. Advanced, you're coming down and taking two or three push-ups off that base. And coming back up, you're getting a huge tricep warm-up. And you're also feeling that motion of the chaturanga as you come down. Inhale back up. Come to flat back position, feeling from the tailbone out the head. And pop that right leg up and back. Kick out your leg. Tuck towards the nose. And one more time. Push that leg out strong. Quadriceps engaged. Glutes engaged. One more time. Tuck in. Extend out. Nice, powerful leg line straight from the booty on out. And let that leg go down and switch out to the left leg. So if lifting up that left, at first it might kind of not be straight. We're going to work on that. Tuck it in. Using those abs. That cat feeling. Kick back out. A little stronger. Third one's going to be your best. So you're pulling it in. Nice strong kick out right there. Maybe a slight heel lift. Active leg line. Tuck that leg back down. Coming back to the right side. Kick it out. Maybe lift that left hand up. Gazing strongly at the floor. Release down. Switch it out. Switch it out. Left leg's going up. The right hand can lift or stay either way. And release back down. Breathe with the flow. Legs lifting on the right. Arms stretching. Inhale, exhale out. Switching out left side. Nice strong leg line. Exhale down. We're going to do that one more time. This strong leg line, pop that right leg, is what you want in warrior three. Nice strong 
Leg lift, release down. The left leg, go for it. Excellent. And release back down. Tuck the knees out wide. We're just going to do a practice child's pose. The knees are wide. If you keep those toes tucked in the back, you're ready to actively move to anything else. You can walk up on a down dog. You put the forehead down right here. Walk the hands out a little bit. I call this an active child's pose. You look out. Those arms are straight out there. Middle finger towards the front of your mat. And as you drop your head down and lift the elbows above the ears, you are getting that shoulder advantage, almost like down dog, without the pressure on the wrists. So this is what I call a timeout child's pose down dog active style. And you can opt for that as you work through our program today. Walk the hands back up and push into those toes and tuck up into full down dog. There you are. Again, if you hate down dogs or if your wrists are sore, keep those knees soft. Keep your head back, looking at the thighs on your great gazing point, Drishti. You can pedal the feet. That helps kind of warm up the hamstrings and calves. A little more rotation even warms up the heel. A settled, calm down dog. You're pushing the heels down. A lot of push into the base of the palm, and you're working that head through that shoulder um, pocket between the arms. Let's soften those knees, look up to the hands, and tiptoe, walk those feet up to the hands, release the hands off. Grab one of the elbows, or just let the hand, arms hang there, and come into a gravity fold. Let yourself sway side to side. I like that sway. You can take the feet a little wider if it's more comfortable and you feel based out better. And as you add that sway side to side, Feel yourself connect with the big toe. When you sway to the right, that big toe pressures up. And on the left, you get the same thing. That automatic um, engagement of your big toe as you move through yoga helps to balance you. It's the initial trigger point for your foot to balance you out on all balancing poses. So we're working that up. Let's take a half lift. Walk the hands up the legs. You're working for a flat back. I like to push on my legs and push my uh, shoulders away from my ears, getting that shoulder benefit. Slide back down and go back into that sway side to side. You might add a little knee bending on that because it feels good. And you can rotate the hip a little bit, getting a little bit of an open hip. As you straighten one leg, you move the arm, elbow away from that side, getting that opening on the side to side. Let's take that half lift again. We're working into our sun salutation A. Get those shoulders away from the ears. Feel that strong neckline. Release back down. If you want more neck stretch. Yoga is all about options. If there's something you love, always do it. Because your body needs it. And I, as a teacher, can't tell all the options. But the more you learn yoga and the more you have those in your toolbox, the more active and personalized your yoga can be. Let's take that half with one more time. Work to strengthen. Use those lat muscles and shoulders. Feel the abs lifting upward and release back down. That's going to be our last half lift until we hit our sun salutations. So we're going to advance to the next warm up. We're going to soften in the legs. Sit back. Let the booty come down. You might have the hands on the legs to support. You're moving to a drishti. Find a drishti anywhere out there, about a foot, two feet out. That's your gazing point for all activity. And feel yourself exhale lower, inhale rise. And if you're in power mode, you don't even need the hands. If you are just not used to taking squats and rising, you use those hands every time to help you get up off that floor. And you might not have that full squat. Our legs are warming up here. Let's take an exhale, hold down low with that exhale, and inhale all the way. Coming up, coming up. Big, huge inhale, press those hands. Exhale, some of the stitchy. Nicely done. Let's scoot the legs back on the mat. Come towards the back side of your mat. We'll do our sun salutations now. Sun A starts with an inhale up. And an exhale fold. Mouth is closed. Half lift on that. And we're moving for the plank chaturanga. You can walk the hands out or jump the feet back. Either when you're lowering down body to the floor. Cobra is just a light lift. Up dog, you're all the way or you're floating on that up dog. Be on the tops of the feet, either way, and changing to down dog. Let the body release backwards, tuck those toes, plant those hands, and push yourself into that.
that down up. Pedaling those feet again, finding whatever your body needs. For some people, they are active and aggressive in their yoga, and they want to keep moving a lot. For others, every down dog, you might need a kneeling child's pose down dog. You just keep those toes tucked back there. And for a more active down dog, you might even add in a leg lift. You take that right leg up into a three-legged down dog, get that extra pressure through the shoulders. What's good for the right is good for the left. So make sure you train at both sides, catcher. We're coming out of this down dog now. Soften those knees, look to the hands. Step walk or jump the feet right up there by the hands. Release, exhale, feel power in that base. Soften the knees and going vertical. Strong inhale, feel that energy. Feel happy, right there. Flex those quads, exhale, some CG. Nicely done. We're gonna do that two more times. Inhale, right up. Strong pace, exhale, fold. Half lift, release the plank, hands are down, seat are back. You're flowing through that chaturanga. You might on that active be doing a couple extra push-ups, finishing with cobra or up dog. Tuck the toes, go down dog. Nice exhale. You can peaceful down dog. You could kneel down and do that down dog, child's pose. Or if you want to add a little bit of higher activity, you push that leg up, you look at the hands, and you might do some hop-offs. Getting a little lift off, working on that ability to fly. Keep the gaze between the arms. The arms are straight on that. Nice, that'll kick your heart rate way up if you're active yoga, yoga practice. Soften those knees, bring those feet up to the hands, however you want, releasing the hands. Exhale, find solid strength in the base. Inhale, go all the way up. Energy, happiness, quads, legs. Bring me some of Nicely done, last A, inhale up, exhale, fold, half lift, release the plank, hands down, <clears throat> chaturanga up dog, tuck the toes, take down dog, and I'd like everybody to take a three-legged down dog right now, pick that right leg up, get it up as high as you can, because we'll be swinging that leg through for warriors in the next series, not yet. Step that leg down <clears throat> and go for the left. Lift that left leg up. See if you can get it up a little more. Feel yourself pushing through that V in the arms. Release that leg back down. Nicely done. Soften in those legs. Let's finish this A off. Look to the hands. Step walk or jump. Exhale. Strong legs. Inhale. Rising up. Hands together. Pressure. Exhale. Some of CG. And we're going to start Sun B. We bring the legs low, we sweep into a chair, Utkatasana. Some chairs are naturally high and some people like to really drop down. It doesn't matter, it's your yoga program. I'm gonna keep a little higher on these. Exhale, fold, hands are coming down. We're folded, half lift, just like an A. Releasing to plank, hands are down. Feet are going back, you're working those push-ups that flow up and tuck the toes, take down up. We're going to warriors now. A little lift on that right leg and swing into that lunge. Hold on right there, hold on. You might add a hand. You might have already added that hand. Turn that back leg out. Find that drishti, feel yourself able to come up with that inhale. And you're gonna walk and drop, the, if not walk, you're gonna drop yourself down. Different people have different lunges. Some people go for just a soft little knee bend. Others slide the foot back and they go for a powerful low right angle lunge. Flex that left leg in that lunge. Feel that back left quad. That'll help sustain you so you don't wobble. Swapping this out, we're going to take, come down, take the right leg back, and go chug on the up dog. And tuck the toes, take down dog. Here comes that left side warrior. A little lift, sweep that leg through. You got a lot of time. Find confidence. Hand on the leg. Nice inhale. Find that drishti out there. Both arms are up. Flex that right quad. That back quad is going to be sustaining you all the day long. And releasing out. Both hands come down. Left leg's going back. You're in that chaturanga flow. Up dog. And tuck the toes. Take down dog. Or on the lower edge, you drop those knees out. And you take that child's pose down dog. Maybe just relaxing. Maybe keeping the arms active. Either way. And if you're power yoga, 
or working on an upper level, you're going to kick that leg up, shift your gaze out by the thumbs, the hands, and you're going to just give a little pop off on that standing leg, a couple on each side. Again, that would be a more advanced level of yoga. Feel that breath flow, especially the exhale. We're going to finish this series, soften the knees, look to the hands, bring those feet up to the hands, and we're sweeping off that base to finish the Utkatasana. Take that chair right there. Nice, and exhale some of the That's one B, so we got two more of those. Starting with that sweep. Sweep, sit down in the chair. There you are. And exhale, fold. Take half lift. Release into plank. The hands are down, the feet are going back. You got that chaturanga up dog. Should be home sweet home. We've done it a few times. Tuck the toes, take down dog. Right side warrior, right here. Right leg sweeping through. Feel strong. Use that hand, use that drishti, bring yourself up. Breathe stronger. The more tired you are, the more awesome it is. And releasing out. Hands are down. Right legs back. And you're flowing through that chaturanga up dog. Tuck the toes, take down dog. And you're ready for the left side. A little lift gives you a pendulum sweep through, and then rising up, strong inhale. Find that drishti to help stabilize you. That flex on the right quad and glute. Nicely done. Releasing out, hands are down, left legs going back, and you're sweeping through, chaturanga up dog. Feels awesome. Tuck the toes, take down dog. Again, you can drop to kneeling down dog. We're pushing it pretty good. Um, pace. I'm feeling my sweat, so I'm sure you are. Or you could be still doing those handstand or that lift off down dog. Peaceful down dogs are great. You're just there feeling that breath flow. Drift is again back at the quads between the legs. Finishing off this sun salutation, you look to the hands, soften the knees, walk or step or jump those feet up. Exhale, get ready, sweeping out. Finish it with toss in the chair. And exhale, samastichi. Nice. Now, as I said, hopefully you got a little sweat on the sprout. Bring the hands together. Put the knuckles of the thumb on the forehead. We're going to take an affirmation. I think anytime you've done six sun salutations, three A, three B, you deserve an affirmation. It's a personal, you know, yeah, you did it. So take that time, and we're gonna flow on with different asanas and different poses. The body has all that heat. Feel that air flowing in and out. Feel that strength of the soul. The breath, the spirit, the body, all working together for your yoga practice today. Nice. So we're going to do that. We're going to go back to our warrior. So step that left leg back, and you've got that right leg in front. So you, you're there, right leg's up, left leg's back. Go into warrior one, and experiment a little bit more. See if you can slide that back foot back a little bit. Slip the hands now, interlock the fingers, slip the hands, and we're going to tilt a little to the right leg, to that strong side, because your leg's right there. Flex that left leg back there. And we're going to breathe back up and take it to the not quite so strong side. You're going to have to really slightly off balance. That's okay. Inhale back up. Nicely done. Straighten that right leg and now drop down to warrior two. So you're just going to let those arms drop out. You're feeling your motion. Warrior twos are one of my favorite. A little flex on that back leg. Gives you that solid base back there. Feel your shoulder blades releasing down the back. I'm going to come here, Melissa. So you should feel this kind of a lower lengthening of the neckline. You want to feel the shoulders allowing the neck to kind of just melt down the back. And as you feel that opening of the neck, very pleasing, nice. And we're going to transition now to warrior three. So bring that left leg in, straighten that right leg, find that drishti in front of you, and just pop that left leg up into, you don't have to go into a huge laid out warrior three, just a nice lift off on that leg, that strong leg line like we practice, you should feel very well. Big toe connection is going to help you on this. Feel that big toe powering into the floor and that strong back leg. Nicely done. And step on through. 
and bring yourself up and take the other leg back. So you're dropping back that left leg and you're coming up into that warrior one. And you might find any level of lunge that you find pleasing for you. If it's a little high of a yoga class for you, you're staying higher. If not, you're down into that huge power lunge. You've got that back quad is flexed on that right leg. Nice three breaths. Let's take that hand flip, interleave the fingers, and pushing up and going off to that left side, feeling that nice left side stretch, challenging the balance there. And inhale back up and take that over to the right side. So you're feeling that stretch as well as that balance challenge. Nice job. Coming back up. Straighten that right, that left leg for a second. And then drop on down to warrior two. Here we are. We're completing that same series that we did. We want those same goals. We want to feel the melting, lengthening of the neck. Shoulders are getting away from the ears always in yoga. It's one of the goals of yoga is to have those shoulders dropping down away from the ears. And your arms, you can feel that whole line. Your drishti on warrior two is that front middle finger. You're shooting that energy out into the universe and you're finding very positive things exist in our universe. Nice. Bring yourself up, bring that back to so number going for warrior three. So you're gonna strongly engage that left leg, use the arms for balancing, and just a little lift on that back leg. Use that drishti, feel that big toe, feel that leg lift. If you slide your gazing point in on that left leg, then you will lay out into that horizontal warrior three. That's more advanced, we'll do that in the next hour. As so you kick that leg and hold that line, nicely done, we've got that left warrior done. Excellent. And step on down. Find yourself on the front of your mat. And we're going to do our tree poses, our standing tree poses. So we'll start with that right side. Again, find your drishti. And bringing that right leg up, it can plant low or high. Pressure that foot, feel that foot pressing in. Feel your shoulders, your breath, your drishti. Those are three tools. If you feel wobbly, breathe more. You can bring those hands up into a high tree, really working that left big toe. We're gonna add a challenge pose here. Do that, bring that right leg up, take a karate kid type position, hook that foot, see if you can flow that back to warrior. Feel that leg flow back there, hold on to that gaze, feel yourself balance, and step on down. Nice. Might have been a surprise challenge for you guys. You're like, whoa. We'll take that on the left side now. So you got that right big toes, got it, got it, got it planted in the floor. Left leg's coming up, higher low, but push. Got to pressure that foot. All asanas have to have balancing pressure. And find maybe some peaceful moment in that, in that asana. You could, if you're uh, experienced in this, you could add different flavors of tilting to the sides. Again, maintaining. And we're gonna move for that knee karate kid type pose right there. And if you want to, hook that foot strong and press it back, take your warrior three option. Kick it back there, keep it strong, hold on, breathe. Kick and breathe, you got it, you got it. I hope. Nice, that looked good, Melissa. Thank you so much for <laughs> flowing with me. And we're ready then, we're gonna do a couple more asanas standing here. So we're gonna take and just do a knee, open knee. So you're gonna bring that right leg back up, karate kid style, firm up that left quad, and just let that knee open and the hand can open right there. And if you're advanced, you could actually be on the toe. So you could be hanging on to that toe and opening up. Breathe. Nice, release that leg down. That's pretty good if you didn't stretch your hamstring because we didn't quite get that hamstring stretch in there. We're on a 15-minute class, so we got to get her done. Bring that left leg up, and you can just take the bent knee open. See so if you can get that right arm out to the side. Use that drishti, use that breath. Of course, if you are on an advanced, you can take that big toe and grab on and open that up. Breathe strong. Nice, go ahead and release that down. Excellent, well done. Let's take one more. Inhale. And 
it. Exhale, release. Let's all face the front right now. We're going to do some front asanas. Take the legs wide. We're doing, we're doing prasarita. So we're going to sauce them down. You can keep the knees bent here if that's uh, a better feeling for you. But prasarita is actually legs are straight. Your hands can come down. You can just hang there. If you can make it with your hands out to the feet, you want to wrap the big toe and pull yourself into that knee and the legs. Taking the full prasarita fold with powerful arm support there. If you wanted and you have the capacity, you could heel toe those feet out wider, taking a bigger V and a bigger pull through. Even at a point, you can plop the top of your head on the floor. <laughs> or you can do bent legs on that flexibility and working that out. That's awesome. Thank you so much for that. Walk the hands back out. We don't stay very long because we got only 50 minutes. Rock yourself back on the heels to release for a second. I'm going to show you a second option. So you could come to the knees in and kind of side to side right here. This is going to be more advanced. You're going to go in, you're going to take the hands back, and you're going to use the hands as two points of the triangle. And on an advanced, you're pulling yourself through. You could take the hands, or you could even pop the feet up. If you're a handstand person and you're more advanced, you might be able to lift the toes off on that. Um, that's very quite advanced, and we'll be doing that more in the next advanced power yoga class. So anything in between the nice fold between the legs, you got all that body heat. Work it out, work it out. Feel it there. Bring yourself back forward and your body up to that half lift. Heel toe the feet in, and we're gonna work and reach to the side. So you're gonna grab on to that left leg, and you're gonna open that right arm up into the sky. Wait, that's my left arm. <laughs> I just switched it out. You are grabbing the left leg and opening up. Switch that out. Bring the hands down to the center. Take a sway. I need a sway. <laughs> Feels good. A little side to side. I can connect with the toes as you do that, do that side to side flow. Switching out to the other side. So you're grabbing onto that ankle, calf muscle, knee, wherever you can get over there and open that other arm into the sky. Exhale all the air out. Empty the abs and do a, a, an expanded level of settling and allowing that breath. Nice. Bring the hands back down. Grab one of those elbows. Let yourself sway side to side. We're going back to that left side. We're going to do this one more time because it gives you that open heart feeling. So hopefully you can grab the leg. If not, just place the hand on the floor and open that arm up. That left arm's up. Exhale the air out while you're here. That emptiness gives you just that much more on the asana. Release down. Take your side to side. You know what's coming. We just did that on the left side, so we're headed for that right side. So however you want to station yourself there and get that arm up, make that exhale happen. Feel that emptiness, that ability to add that more rotation. And exhale back down. Nice. Bring the hands and soften the heels. Heel toe the feet in. Go down into that sun salutation squat. Get the hands on the legs right there. You're coming in close. And now you're just going to find that base and inhale to the sky, which is very familiar because of our sun salutations. And exhale, samastiti. We're going to add just a few more asanas. So we're going to take and step the right leg up to the front of the room, up to this side. And you've got that right leg there, and you're in warrior one. Allowing that there. And we're going to transition and take that right leg and go to warrior two. Because you've already been there. It's nice, like home sweet home. You've got those arms opening on that warrior. You're on that right leg. You're going to straighten that right leg, and you're going to reach towards the front of the room. And you can drop the hand here and lift that left hand into the sky. On a more advanced, you can actually connect that arm to the knees and work on that opening heart, straight line, intensity. Highest level of triangle would be to take some distance, find that big toe, really flex that back leg and feel yourself full triangle layout. Gazing is up in the sky.
take that upper hand back, bring it to the knee, bring yourself up, heel toe that foot in. We're gonna try one more time that warrior three, just because it's a nice challenge pose. And you don't have to do warrior three big. It makes you balance. Use that big toe, just lifting off. But again, if you are a power person, you're in that whole layout, you're taking that full tree, I mean that full warrior three option. And step on down. And let's switch the legs off. Just turn the other side of your mat. You're on your left leg now, unless you go backwards and switch out. But at any rate, we are on that warrior. We're on the left side is where I hope you're at. If not, I hope you can take care of it. We're going for warrior two. So we're right here taking that warrior two. There you are. You got the melting, you got the drishti over the finger, you got the moment of peace. Deep breaths. Straighten that leg, and we're gonna now have that leg straight, add the reach, 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 and then drop that hand down to the leg. You're working to get that upper arm straight up. If you wanna add some layers of difficulty, your wrist is on the calf muscle knee area. The quad back there just flexed up. You can slide that foot out, increase the distance, wrap the toe, breathe, breathe, breathe. Gaze is going up. Nice job, bring that back hand around, down to the leg. Heel toe that back foot in low, find that base. And you're rising up for our warrior three. Here we go. Strong left leg, push through that. Right leg lift off, breathe strong, breathe strong. Advance people. Strong inhale and kick that leg. Breathe, whenever you feel like you're wobbling, breathe stronger. Engage the muscles more on each leg. Go ahead and step on down. Bring yourself back to the forward position with both feet to the front of the room. Very nicely done. We're gonna come back and we're going to do side angle now. So we're coming back to your right side. We're going into that warrior lunge, take this foot back, and you're just gonna take that right arm and hang out on the knee. That's a basic side angle. You can take this arm and work on that straight open heart feeling. Push that arm on the leg, feel that heart opening right there. The lats coming together. Full side angle, that hand's gonna flip and go straight up to the upper corner of the roof and your gaze is gonna be right up there at that hand. And the final touch is the power pinky, Kung Fu Panda, Hoop. The hand slips, the pinky is energized and you're gazing up there. And that back quad is strengthening to hold you into this sighting. <sighs> Breathing. <sighs> Nicely done, bring that hand around. Find that kneecap and lifting up, inhale. Feel yourself energized at the center point, and we're gonna pivot around and take that same side angle on the left side. Arm comes down on the knee, keep the hip open, let that arm go up, be your right arm. Feel that hand on the knee opening the heart. You might find a drishti right there on the floor if you're just entering and not used to side angle. If you're more powerful, you're gonna take that hand to the upper bridge, your gaze is at the hand, and you're gonna do that power pinky motion. Hand flips towards the back side of your room. That gazing point is that pinky, and you get a little pressure on that knee to open the heart while you're in there. Hang on to that, breathe deep. Nice, bring that hand around. Base out on that knee for safety, and inhale. Bring yourself right back up. Pivot both feet right there. And you can come up, let's take a little breather. Wipe off your sweaty brow. It's not sweaty. You know what to do, you should have worked on that. <laughs> more quads, more flexing. All right, we're gonna take a behind the back proserita. Hands are coming down and they're interlocking behind you in that same way. The thumbs are on the tailbone right here and you're gonna fold over and push those thumbs up into the sky as you fold. So you can see Melissa here going, she has a lot of flexibility. She's really able to push those hands. You're constantly pushing that pinky. Not all of us have that kind of flexibility, but we are working on it, that's what this Asana is for is to increase that shoulder flexibility. You're gazing right down to the floor right here usually because it's a balancing issue. Working hard on those shoulders. Release the thumbs, but don't stand up because you need a break. But we're going to go in one more time because 
twice of doing something is twice as good of only one time right now. So pushing up again, see if you can get, rotate the shoulders back, and see if you can get a little bit better on your shoulder flexibility. Again, these are some of the things we should try and do every yoga class. Healthy shoulders, healthy hips. Excellent. And let those thumbs come back down, soften in those knees. We're always back to the knees, we're at that squat, and you can just bring yourself up. Nicely done. A little energy on the top, because it makes you feel nice. And <laughs> release out on that exhale. Well done on that. We have one more thing we're gonna do for our shoulders. We're gonna do eagle group pose. So eagle is, we're just gonna start with the arms, and you can add the legs if you want. So on the arms, you'd be crossing right hand, is on top of the left, and I'm, I'm saying it backwards, so you're doing it just like I am. Right hands over the left, you're bending at the elbows, you're locking in, you're gonna wrap that up, and you're gonna kind of squat down and look at the floor, find a drishti on the floor. And that is a nice place to be. If your hands won't wrap, you could just grab onto the fingertips or something, holding onto that. You're dropping in, now if you're gonna do full eagle, you're gonna deepen the squat, you're gonna engage that belly muscle, you're gonna feel that belly just pop in, really high, you're gonna tap that toe over. Hold on, you might just hold that floor tap with that leg crossed over. You might go, okay, that's it. Of course, if you're advanced, you're already into full eagle because you pick that toe up. That right toe is fighting for balance, or that left toe, whatever that toe is. <laughs> I, I, not, I usually teach in this room backwards, so my right and left are completely <laughs> going everywhere. So it, either way, you are holding on to that balance. And let's go ahead, hold on to those arms. Let's take an upper range. Keep the arms, keep the arms. Because you're working that shoulder, range of motion, flex the quads right there. Find a little drishti up there on the ceiling if you can. And exhale, release. Really working that range of motion on that right arm. Well done, so now it's time for the left arm. So here we go, you know where you're going. So at least on the left side, you can get that thing there. Left hands crossing over the right. You're binding in. That might be all you can do, depending. You can get the wrap or the hold right here, fine. You can soften into like an utkatasana, ooh ah, I like that. Take your choices right here. The advance would be the crossover of the leg, the engagement of bondus and the hold and the tuck up of the leg. Fighting with that crossed over leg. You can cross the left or the right. I've seen it both ways on Google, so it must be okay to do it both ways. If it's on Google, it's true. <laughs> And there you go. Holding on, hang on, hang on, breathe. Put some making jokes in here. Okay, we're there, we're there. Stepping out, stepping out. Hold on to those arms because we want that upper range because it's nice for your shoulders. Nice shoulder health on that. Couple breaths right there. And exhale, release all that out. Very well done, very well done. So We've got just a few more asanas that we're going to be adding in next time we'll be doing Bird of Paradise. If you're in my class and you like Bird of Paradise, you're going to want to go to the Power Yoga class. If you like more handstand flight, you're going to want to the Power Yoga class. Right now we're going to come down to the floor on our mats. So bring yourself down, take the legs back like our sun salutations. Take your up dog position right there. And then tuck yourself back and into that child's pose for just a second. Take a couple breaths there. And bring your knees and legs up and go to a seated position. So you can just sit down right there. Let the legs come out in front of you. And you're gonna, we're gonna do just a couple of releasing breaths. So you're gonna inhale up and then open mouth, just let it rip. We're gonna do two more of those because those full seven. Inhale up, add some pressure and let it go. Last one, take that inhale up. And let that air. Very nicely done. We need to do our Marichiyasana. So you're gonna bring the right foot up and you're gonna to to keep that left foot engaged if possible. You're gonna to to twist and go 90 degrees to that right side. And you might even add an elbow right there if you can cross that up, either way. But you're at 90 and if you can push to 180, looking all the way behind you, exhale the air out, empty belly, Gives you that much more intestinal ring out. You might take the hand behind you, giving a little more vertical by that hand, pressing into the floor behind you. And don't forget that active left leg over there if you want it active. If it's dying, 
Just let it rest. Nice, bring yourself back around. Bring the hands overhead. She's side to side and we'll just switch off to the other side. So we've got the left leg coming up, a little distance here. You're going for the 90 first. Keep the posture well done. You can wrap up. For some people that's very difficult to just get here. If you can add the higher flavor, you're gonna get that elbow there, hand behind. You can go 180, looking all the way behind you. Exhale the air out in the belly. Empty that bottom belly area so that you can add that rotation. Nice, bring yourself back around. Inhale up, take that stretch right there. And we're gonna pull in and we're gonna take a Navasana just once because we're just running right out of our 50 minutes. You can take a supported Navasana or toe tap on that Navasana or V-sit on the Navasana. On the V-sit, strong quads, use those lat muscles in the back. Maybe let that go, see how that's working out for you. Anywhere in between, nicely done. Tuck those toes up. We're gonna plant down and we're gonna go for a pelvic or bridge pose. So on the basic pelvic, you're gonna scoot the feet in as far as you can, close as you can, and then just lift the glutes up and tuck the hands underneath. And I know Melissa does wheel. You go for wheel. On the advance, you would do wheel like Melissa. And that's very gymnastic, very strong, very flexible in the back. Be in between. You can stay in that pelvic or you can go to a tabletop where you have the feet close and you just lift up and you make your belly and legs, you try to make it a table. That's an in-between. So take it, just release out, tuck the legs up and kind of roll through the back. Keep the chin tucked. See, you can roll through the back. Let those feet go over the head as you roll through. They kind of like a weight. They go towards the, over the head and come back up. We're gonna go now for inversion time. So on an inversion, you can go, the easiest inversion for me and the happiest one is happy baby. So you just lay down on the back and you just let those feet come out wide. You can hold on behind the legs or all the way in the feet. You piston the legs down or up. You can winch your wiper a little side to side. You can go for a center split press out <laughs> on the advanced, allowing working for those legs to press out. And you can go a half press. Tuck one leg in and press the right side out. Find any of those flavors that you find give you the flexibility and the closure to your practice today. The other inversion would be to do a headstand or a shoulder stand. For a shoulder stand, you tuck the knees up towards the eyebrows, curling up, hands on the back, and then with a strong engagement of the legs, you would press them into the sky. So that would be shoulder stand. The other option would be to do a headstand. And if you know headstand, you are already there because you know enough yoga that you didn't want to do happy baby. You wanted headstands. Headstands um, are in the power yoga class. We'll do those. Um, you want to make a pocket and you want to be able to put your head in that pocket and pull yourself up into that headstand. I'll demo it real quick right in your pocket. Head in the pocket, pushing in the elbows. Scoot the feet up so that your hips are up, and then you lift yourself up into that headstand. So again, a bit of an advanced process. So just stay in happy baby. Find that finale. We're gonna be moving to Shavasana. After we finish this. Allow the feet to come down, the hands over the head, stretching the hands as high as you can, as far as you can, the opposite wall and the legs to this wall. Bring the hands down and press them by the hips and lift the torso off to reset the spine. Tuck the feet in and lift the hips off to reset the tailbone. And then extend the legs out to the outer edge of your mat. That way you've got a nice wide V in the legs if you need to pop the torso up or the hips up again, realign so that you feel like you are in the most comfortable position of your life and allow the hands to come out wide. Entering that Shavasana. 
Anytime you feel like something needs adjusted, take the time to do that. The mouth now is slightly open because the breath has no restriction. There's no effort to breathe in or out. Air just floats in and out. You're working to deeply relax. The mouth slightly open. The jaw is released. No tension. Especially at a point in time when they are slowing out, connect with what's happening throughout your whole body. The deeper that breath flows out, the more you feel relaxation through the joints and all the way out into the extremities. If you have other positions that you like in yoga, I see all kinds of things and I embrace and love each person who likes something different. I'll tell you some of those options if you want to give them a try. One is to place the hands on the belly, kind of uh, honoring the function of the belly. It's a little more relaxing sometimes to the arms. You might take the left hand up on the heart and leave the right hand on the belly. That connects the chakras in yoga. life really has you in a stressful place. If you're feeling a lot of stress at this point in Shavasana, maybe turn the fingers down. Let the fingertips touch the floor. I'll sometimes take that as an option and release my negative things that I can't change them. Just like push them off. So I release them down to Mother Earth. I release them down into the ground where they can't keep dragging on me. some time with that release, I bring my hands back upwards, allowing light and energy and positivity to replace that which I cannot change. straight up above you, matching up the right palm and the left palm, which balances logical and artistic. Allow the knuckles of the thumb to come to your forehead, taking an affirmation, a closing affirmation of gratitude for the mind, the intelligence, the decisions you can make to help your life go forward, the choices you can make, and the effect you can have on those around you as you step forward and follow through with your decisions. Bring the knuckles to the chin, feeling there the breath of life, 
as you breathe. Gratitude for the life you've been given, for the health that you do have. Commitment to speak with your mouth, kind words, positive words that can bring positive feelings to those around you, to smile to those you do know and even to those you don't know, can make a difference in someone's life. Bring the knuckles of the thumb to the center of the chest, honoring the heart, the lungs, instructing in your mind that your body keep those systems strong and powerful. Deepen your breath and feel that energizing, powerful affirmation for your heart to defend you, for your T-cells to increase, and for your body to be strong. Let the heart guide you, and you won't have as, you'll, you'll have no regrets, maybe. Bring that right hand over the hip, tuck the feet up, and tilt the legs to that right side, allowing yourself to shift into that fetal curl. The arm can become a pillow. You can rest right there. Just take a couple final breaths of closure. And then take an inhale and bring yourself all the way up to that original cross-legged position that we started with. Bringing the hands in the center to Anjali Mudra. Feeling peace for the practice you've had. Lower the chin. Allow yourself to feel that neck Inhale, the joints in the body. Inhale, back up. Take a deep breath that's close with an arm. For all who have joined in this practice today, that closes us with a united soul to soul and now namaste. From that best place deep in my heart to yours, have a wonderful day.